the 4070 Ti impresses for its performance and efficiency. After covering the power scaling in my last video, I wanted to compare it directly to my 3090. How does the 192-bit memory bus of the 4070 Ti compare to the 3090's massive 384-bit bus in resolution scaling? And what else did I discover during benchmarking that no one else is talking about? Let's get into it. After testing the 4070 Ti, I walked away very impressed with the power efficiency of that GPU. You could lower the power limit and the performance drop was not that significant. And this is in sharp contrast to my RTX 3090 ROG Strix GPU, which is a power pig. At stock settings, it consumes 380 watts. Overclocked, it goes up to 480 watts. I purchased my 3090 back in November as they were more available on the secondhand market back then and I was able to pick one up at a good deal. I wanted a GPU that could game at 4K when I had the time around the holidays for gaming and I wasn't going to count on any price drops for the 4080 that wouldn't be according to Jensen's plan. And I wasn't going to trust AMD on their supply of the overhyped 7900 XTX GPU. Not to mention, I'm not ready for the amount of money Nvidia and AMD expect 4K gamers to lose each and every generation now with their $1,000 or more 4K gaming GPU strategy. I covered that in detail previously, link above and below. I ran the same power scaling test on the 3090 in Wildlife Extreme and adjusted the power limit from 40% up to 120%. You can see that at the stock configuration at 100%, it achieves 246 FPS. Increasing the power limit up to 120% improves the frame rates 4.5% to 257. Going the other way, at 70% power limit, the performance drops 18% and then performance falls off a cliff with power limits below 70%. I then plotted the power scaling of the 4070 Ti on the same chart and Wow, is the 4 nanometer TSMC process a lot more efficient than Samsung's 8 nanometer node used in the 3090. While the 3090 technically beats the 4070 Ti by 3.2%, it also consumes 180 watts more power. The two match frame rates at 246 FPS and the power difference is still 128 watts. And moving into the most efficient region with a 4070 Ti at 60% power limit is matching the frame rates of the 3090 at its 80% power limit. Now at that point, the power difference is 136 watts. Again, the efficiency of the 4070 Ti for that level of performance is really amazing. Let's move on to resolution scaling. In watching and reading many of the reviews, there is a very clear trend for the 4070 Ti and how its performance scales with resolution. Looking at these charts from Tech Power Up at 1080p in GPU demanding games like Red Dead 2, Elden Ring, and Cyberpunk, you see that the performance of the 4070 Ti is slightly better than the 3090 Ti. At 1440p, the 4070 Ti performance is now falling short of the 3090 Ti in many titles, so that the overall 25 game average is just below the 3090 Ti. And at 4K, the performance of the 4070 Ti now drops down to be just above the 3090. And this holds true with newer games like Hogwarts Legacy. At 1080p and 1440p, the 4070 Ti is like a 3090 Ti, and at 4K, it's more like a 3090. So when I ran my resolution scaling benchmark in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at highest settings, you see the 4070 Ti better than the 3090 at 1080p and 1440p, while at 4K, they are tied. And that is the same even when you decrease the settings to high, and then again, decrease the settings to medium. And when I overclock my 3090 and consume 480 watts at the highest settings, it only manages to close the gap at 1080p and 1440p while having a slight lead at 4K. In looking at the benchmark results, I discovered something I did not expect and something I have not heard discussed. One thing nice about Shadow of the Benchmarks is that it really does scale well with CPU and GPU performance and it shows you the GPU utilization. At 4K, GPU utilization is 100% for both the 3090 and 4070 Ti. At 1440p, the GPU utilization of the 3090 is only 58%. Now it is well known that the 3090 is CPU bottlenecked at 1080p and 1440p. After all, the 3090 was the BF GPU and targeted as a 4K gaming card. So any CPU bottleneck below that resolution is expected. 
However, the 4070 Ti also shows a GPU utilization of just 58% at 1440p. What the heck? And this is using a 16 core 32 thread Ryzen 9 5950X, a CPU based on the Zen 3 architecture and still for sale today. So the 4070 Ti at its target resolution of 1440p is being CPU bottlenecked by the 5950X. We'll get back to that one later. By the way, if you like videos like this, like, share, and consider subscribing. And let me know in the comments below if you knew a Zen 3 CPU, which are best sellers at Amazon today, taking 7 out of the top 10 spots, was going to bottleneck the 4070 Ti at its native resolution of 1440p. Let's move on to resolution scaling with something that is more demanding on the GPU. Now I did the resolution scaling in Unigine Valley from 540p all the way up to 4K. You can see that the performance greatly leveled off by 1080p in lower resolutions where the GPU utilization decreases. However, you do see the 3090 at stock settings does score higher frame rates than the 4070 Ti at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. I also did resolution scaling with my favorite GPU intensive benchmark in Unigen Heaven. Heaven is a good benchmark as it will hammer the GPU to its limits. And when I ran the test from 540p to 4K, you can see the nice performance scaling for both the 3090 and 4070 Ti as the resolution changes. And in running these tests in heaven, you can see the GPU utilization is high at 1080p and all the way down to 540p. Since we know it has good GPU utilization, let's look at the three most relevant resolutions. At 1080p, the 3090 averages 243 FPS, and the 4070 Ti is at 192 FPS, or about 20% lower. At 1440p, the 3090 averaged 157 FPS, while the 4070 Ti is at 136, or 13% lower. And at 4K, the 3090 averages 77 FPS, while the 4070 Ti is at 60 FPS, or 22% lower. Now this MSI Ventus is power limited, but I can increase the power limit of my 3090. And when I max out that power limit, at 1080p, the 3090 moves from 243 to 256 FPS for another 5%. At 1440p, the 3090 moves from 157 to 171 FPS for a 9% gain. And at 4K, the 3090 moves from 77 to 83 FPS for a 7% gain. Of course, the trade-off for those modest gains is much higher power consumption, where it goes from 380 watts to 480 watts, or 26% higher. I also wanted to do a comparison at comparable power. Undervolting and keeping the 3090 to a comparable 280 watts, at 1080p, the 3090 is 18% higher than the 4070 Ti. At 1440p, the 3090 is 10% higher. And at 4K, the 3090 is 19% higher. So using a GPU-heavy benchmark, the 3090 is ahead of the 4070 Ti. Okay, what does all of this mean? Despite everyone telling you that the 4070 Ti is faster than the 3090, its 192-bit bus will ensure that that will not be the case going forward. As we saw, when put into a GPU-demanding scenario, the 3090 is going to perform better, especially at 4K, than the 4070 Ti. The 3090 has a 384-bit memory bus and is twice the width of the 192-bit bus of the 4070 Ti. And the bandwidth of the 3090 is 936 gigabytes per second, while the 4070 Ti is only at 504. Now here's the thing. Not all of today's game engines will utilize the GPU as heavily. But what about the future, as game engines become more GPU heavy? How will the performance fall off? To get an idea of what that looks like, we can look at the past. At 4K, we can say the 4070 Ti is like a 3090. Back in 2020, when NVIDIA launched the 3070, the 3070 was equivalent to the 2080 Ti. When Steve at Hardware and Box did his review, the 14 game average at 1440p showed the 3070 and the 2080 Ti to be the same. And at 4K, the 2080 Ti was just 2% faster. A year later, when he reviewed the 3070 Ti, the 2080 Ti was now 1.7% faster than the 3070 at 1440p, and at 4K, it was now 6% faster. So in one year, the 2080 Ti gained almost a 4% advantage over the 3070 at 4K. 
Now that doesn't sound like a lot, however, the bus width and the bandwidth differences are not as drastically different. The 3070 has 73% of the bandwidth of the 2080 Ti. The 4070 Ti only has 54% of the bandwidth of the 3090. With the release of new and more demanding games each and every year, the 4070 Ti will drop off in performance at 4K much faster due to its limited bandwidth. And if the newer games exceed the 12 gigabytes on the 4070 Ti, the performance will really drop off and it will become a stuttery mess. This is not by accident. Nvidia purposely limited the bandwidth of the 4070 Ti to make sure it would not compete well at 4K. Nvidia wants 4K gamers to pay up and give them more than $1,000 for their GPU just for the privilege of gaming at 4K. As long as you purchase the 4070 Ti for high refresh rate 1440p gaming and don't expect it to be a 4K gaming GPU, this GPU performs really well. And with how efficient this GPU can be, I still think it could be the ultimate small form factor GPU this generation, if you can get it at a discount. Getting back to the CPU bottleneck, if a Ryzen 9 5950X bottlenecks this GPU at its native resolution of 1440p, what CPU doesn't? And how much performance are you losing if you don't have the latest and greatest CPU? To answer all of these questions and more, we'll cover that next time. Thank you all so very much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.